Oh, look at you right on time. I'm John Zadar. This is Tuesday. It is December 13th and you're watching On Top and Hot, where we like to discuss hot OTC and penny stocks. And there's a lot of information out there to be covering because a penny stock is any stock under five bucks, regardless of what market it's on. So they're on the major exchanges, they're on the OTC, they're everywhere. Now the best place to start your research is always with the news. That's what I've been doing. That's news from the last six days from the OTC market. That's news I've looked at and handpicked to share with you. Now I'm sharing news with you that's pertinent news. You got mergers, acquisitions, uplistings, dividends, bankruptcies, new technologies. I mean, all sorts of great information. So please take your time, go through that. I guarantee you, you're going to find a few that interest you. Now, when I do my research on an OTC stock, this site is what I consider the best site to do it on, the otcmarkets.com website. Now they've got everything you're looking for. All that news, I get that from this site. Filing, share structure, all that stuff. And the best part about it is, it's updated every single day by people who have that information. FINRA and the SEC. There's no reason to be going out to Google or anywhere else just to do research. Unless, of course, you can't find what you're looking for. It happens. Then you can run out there. But otherwise, start your research here, folks. Guarantee you, going to save you a lot of frustration and a lot of that precious time. So let's take a look at how our OTC market finished today. That doesn't look good. So I'm going to hope, here we go, after I refresh this, she jumps and she didn't. Boo! We don't like this, folks. This is about the same we had yesterday. Our dollar volume is at 1.5 billion. Nothing's going to happen until we get this up near 2 billion. Share volume, we fell. I think we were at 7.4 billion yesterday. Today we're at 7. Again, this needs to be up in double digits. We need to be up at 10 billion. That seems to get the gears rolling a little faster on the market. And our trades, well, again, as I say, every single day we're stuck. We are stuck between 250,000 and 300,000 shares. So yeah, the market is still cold molasses. No bow to doubt it. All right, I got some stocks I want to share with you now. Two of them are in the health sector, which is a bit surprising for me. I don't normally like to cover health sector stocks. Not that I have anything against them, but a lot of them just have some very difficult news presses to read or try to explain, which makes it hard for me to share them with you. But it's not a sector we can ignore. Ever since COVID, the health sector has been exploding with all sorts of growth and all sorts of things. Clinics popping up, test kits, new drugs coming out. It's just everywhere. So even if it's difficult to read these, we need to look at a couple. But in saying that, the two we're going to look at today aren't just difficult, they're uncomfortable. I think you'll catch my drift. Let me show you what I got. All right, first stock we're going to take a look at is not one of the health sector stocks. I'm going to save those for last just in case we have to do some cleanup. First stock we're going to take a look at is sticker MAPT. <clears throat> this is Maptelligent. Maptelligent had some big news today. She was catching some strong momentum on the charts and she is exiting the triple zero zone on the charts. Right now she is at triple zero nine, a beautiful buy price if you believe a stock is going to continue to grow. And she did 80% gains today. Now, most triple zero stocks don't get big gains, have big movements in a day. They just don't. They move real slow down there. But once they get up to double zero zone, they catch traction, they catch speed, and we start making gains a lot faster. And I think there's a strong likelihood that this stock could be one of those situations. She is on the pink tier in current. She's got a verified profile and a verified transfer agent. Now, these are important, folks. If you're going to be in the stock for a long time, make sure you see these. There's a lot of validated information that's represented by these ticks that's being done behind the scenes. But if you're just day trading or you're doing a fast swing, psh, don't worry about it. Most things aren't going to matter to you. So what does Maptelligent do? Well, I'd like to read this to you, but it's a little technical and actually it doesn't say what I was hoping it would say. Now they do a lot of different things, but I'm going straight to the description in the news that we're gonna read today. So they tell us over here that Maptelligence mission 
is to provide information and data enabling organizations to quickly share information during the time of a crisis. Maptelligent provides geographic platform to access site-specific information enhancing physical security and facility management. Maptelligent continues its dedication in bringing the latest in custom configured, geo-enabled indoor mapping and applications to the market. Maptelligent creates interactive, dynamic digital floor plans that have a quick learning curve and were designed for non-technical users. Now, I'll be honest, I don't understand all the implications and facets of their technology, but what I have gathered here is that this is a lot like GPS that we use outside on the streets, but it is being being used inside for buildings. They got maps of the entire building, the floor plans, every single floor, and you can see that all on your phone. You can see what's going on if there is a crisis situation, and there is communication built in so people can talk to each other during those situations. So what was the relative volume today around the company's big news? Well, she did a lot. Whoa, that's a nice jump from 7.7 .7 million to 120 million, let's call it. A huge jump. Lots of interest in this company. MAPT share structure. Well, I gotta be honest, folks, I've lost a little bit of faith in this page. So I have been running around finding the floats in different places today. I had to go to Google for all of them. And this one is, let me see if I can find it, 471 million in the float. See, we don't even have that number here. 471 million, almost a half a billion in the float of this company. Financials, what sort of money are they making? Well, they're actually making nothing. As you can see here, a bunch of zeros, and even on the quarterly, they've got nothing. Now, they should say shell or shell risk over here. In both cases, it means we're not making money, and they're not. But the news that came out today could easily change this, folks, very quickly. And this company would start making revenues, which everybody loves to see. And coming into the double zeros, that would give her the catalyst she needs to hit a penny. Oh, yeah. So what are the disclosures for the company? We got anything recent over here? Um, no, we got a 10Q. That is a financial quarterly report that came out on the 14th of last month. And that is up to date to September. So let's take a look at the news. What do we got here? This current? Yes, it is. This is all current news. Looking at a couple of other pieces of news gives us a little more insight to what the company's about. Let's see what we got here. Maptelligent is pleased to announce its latest digital transformation offering, NFT minting. Had no clue, none at all. Uh, let's see if anything else jumps out down here. No. All right, so let's jump into that piece of news right here. Maptelligent Inc. is pleased to announce it has entered into an agreement with Axum Geospatial. Same piece of news. They tell us here that Axum Geospatial is to provide Maptelligent complete GIS like GPS, maybe that's a global internal system, services with indoor map applications as part of its building information solution set. Maptelligent continues its dedication to bringing the latest in custom configured geo-enabled indoor mapping applications to the market. Axum is excited to partner with Maptelligent on this project as helping organizations harness the power of indoor location technology and digital twin capabilities to deliver value-driven solutions continues to be the focus for Axum. Axum Geospatial is the largest singular provider of end-to-end -end geospatial services and solutions in the United States serving the communities in which we live in. And we've already read what Maptelligent does. So there you go. You got two companies, and I'm not exactly sure the specialty of Axum Geospatial. I haven't done a deep dive. So again, I'm going to tell you some more due diligence is required here. But this is new. We've never had GIS. We've had GPS for outside, but nothing for the inside. And this could be important. I mean, you know, we're thinking about it. What's the use you could really get from this? Well, there could be a lot more to it than we're aware of. In either case, there was a ton of volume around this today. She had a big jump, and she is coming out of the triple zeros, which I'm always looking for. Let's go take a look at that chart. As I'm sure you expected, we are over here at Thinkorswim, my free trading platform I got from TD Ameritrade when I signed up for their free trading account. So can you. 
This is Dicker MAPT six month four hour chart. We got a high bubble here of 008. This is in May, and it looks like yesterday we had a low bubble of 0004. Right now we are more than double that at 0009. This run we had here, that is a 400% jump, and I can't find a reason. This happened in May. Well, they had news the month before, they had news the month after, but there was nothing going on here unless there was a secret tweet that I didn't see. So this 400% jump was very short-lived, as you can see, came all the way back down and fell even further than where it started from, and pretty much has just been going sideways until today we got some activity. Now you can see she's had some strong bouts of volume, but she's even had periods of no volume. But today was a strong volume day. We went from what was at 7.7 million to 120 million shares today. Bouncing off of that low bubble with news. That's like putting octane booster into your gas. She shot up from underneath all her SMAs, went above all her SMAs, and then pulled back and is now sitting here perched very nicely on her 50 day SMA. Our technicals looking strong. We got a crossover on our percentage price oscillator, our PPO, which is a lot like our MACD, except the MACD uses the whole price and the percentage price oscillator uses a percentage of the price. Our MACD is crossing the signal line right now showing a lot of strength and look at that RSI folks. What a jump. She jumped from 38 to 68. And right now she's just going sideways. Everything looks pretty steady and strong on the four hour. 20 day one hour. All right, we got a slow, steady slope downhill here to that low bubble and then a launch. And look at that, folks. Look, she actually broke the double zero today. I wasn't aware of that. Double zero one two. She did fall back here to triple zero nine and is sitting on her 200 day on the uh, one hour chart. That looks good. And our technicals, uh, everything looks real strong. They do show just a small sign of pulling back, but there is a lot of heat in that pit still. Let's take a look at that five day, five minute. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna draw a line here at the bottom of this surge, right there, right there at the bottom and up here at the top. Then I'm gonna eyeball it right in the center. I'm not trying to line it up anything. I'm just trying to find the center. It looks like about there. What I'm looking for is to see if the price stayed above the halfway point of everything I put on the table. More than 50%. And look at that. Now, I may be a little high, a little low. Matter of fact, let's just check it. I'm going to grab my Fibonacci. That's a tool that does it perfectly for you. Poke the bottom of the surge. Poke the top of the surge. And I'm just a wee bit low. Just a wee bit low. But if you look at that blue line, it is sitting right on it perfectly. And that's what we're looking for. We want to see the price stay above the 50% mark. Anywhere above it is good. That gives you about a 7 out of 10 chance that it's not going to fall. It's not a guarantee, but it's a likelihood. And the same thing works if it comes underneath. And I don't mean just underneath. I mean falls a little bit away from the 50% mark. Chances are it's going to continue dribbling down. So I'm always looking to see that price stay above or at least near that 50% percent mark. So everything looks pretty good here. Looks like she wants to continue, folks. She's at a great price, triple zero nine. She's already hit double zeros. So I think she's going to do it again. I would do some more due diligence. Honestly, I didn't get a chance to dive into this as much as I would have liked to, but this sounds like a new technology that nobody's got. And you know, that can be a big thing if it catches fire. M-A-P-T. It's worth a deeper dive, folks. All right, I'm ready to do the first health sector stock, though I do wish I was wearing rubber gloves and a face mask. All right, this is Shineco, ticker SISI. It is a penny stock on the NASDAQ. This is a Chinese company. We know they're Chinese, even though they don't tell us so over here, by that prefix. We use a one here in the United States. In China, they use 86. Now, I'm not sure if you'd call this company a biotech or not, but they do work in the healthcare sector. Now, they haven't had any news come out today or filings, but they did have a big, important milestone piece of news come out on December 7th. And since there's nothing else sitting on the table, I got to figure that's what's going on. But maybe if you do some more DD, you'll find even more calls. So she finished today at $1.94 with almost 50% gains. 
They tell us over here that the company was incorporated in Delaware in 1997 and they're headquartered in Beijing, China. Shineco is a holdings company utilizing modern engineering technologies and biotechnologies. Shineco produces, among other products, Chinese herbal medicines, organic agricultural produce, and specialized textiles. And you got a link right here if you want to go visit them. BioSISI.com. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Not a bad jump for not having anything on the table today. We went from 72,000 shares a day to 2.3 million. Share structure, another one of those companies I had to go use Google for because they didn't give us any information here and I can't find it in 10Ks and 10Qs. We have another low float. As you can see, we've only got 16 million outstanding, so you knew it was going to be a decent float. 12 million is what we're looking at. Financials for Shine Co. Are they making money? Well, yes and no. Remember, we got to take these three zeros and put them behind any of the numbers here. At the end of their fiscal year, which ended in June, they did $2.1 million, but they lost $1.6 million. Not good. Have they fixed that yet? Not completely. They did make some money here in the second quarter, but uh, they're still losing more often than they're gaining. So as I like to say, they need to tweak that formula and fast. Disclosures. All right. Most recent disclosure we got here is their 10 quarterly. And that came out uh, about a month ago, and that is current up to September. Let's go jump on over to that news, see what is happening there. All right, this is news that's been imported. This is news that comes from the OTC market. This is the news we want to take a look at, isn't it? Uh, I can't tell. Let me just jump on into that news. Okay, this is the news I want to look at. Shineco Inc. subsidiary granted USPTO patent and FDA marketing approval for its in situ fecal specimen sampling device. Yes, you heard me right. Shineco Inc., a producer and distributor of Chinese herbal medicines, organic agricultural, and other biotech products, announced that its controlling affiliate, Changzhou Biwen Pharmaceutical Company, has been granted a patent by the United States Patent and Trademark Office protecting its in situ fecal specimen sampling device for the use of stool test sample collection and the marketing approval for the product by the Food and Drug Administration. This product provides a massager like finger type swab and a collection tube and lid with unidirectional sampling inlet. It is a leading stool sample collection device on the market that can be used for self-collection while defecation and does not need a container or plastic bag for this process. After collection, the laboratory staff can finish off all the testing procedures without opening the sample tube. Whew, nice for them, huh? In just a few days, this product was presented at Medic 2022 in Dusseldorf, Germany, one of the largest annual exhibitions of medical devices in the world. Its humane, convenient, painless, and innovative design has attracted the attention of professionals and potential distributors in the field. That's it, folks. You got a fecal specimen sampling device that has been approved by the FDA and they have been approved to sell it here in the United States. Now, I don't know how big of a deal fecal sampling is, but I know it is part of the healthcare. I know it's important. I think, well, when you reach my age, it's already been done once or twice. <clears throat> Folks, if you're young, just get ready for it. But being serious, they've got a product. It has been approved not only for use, but for sale. Let's go take a look at that chart. Ooh, I'm glad we're looking at the chart. I like what I see. This is ticker SISI, six month, four hour chart. Six months ago, we were at a high of almost $3, $2.95. And then here in September, we hit a low at 57 cents. And right now in December, we are at $1.94. She has been falling all this time until she hit that low bubble. Then she just kind of planed out. 
And it looks like once that 200 got close enough, she gave it the good old heave hole to get on top of it. And she was up there for a few days and then started dribbling down, got all the way down here, hit a low spot, and then started to climb back up again. Now this is the fifth, this is the sixth, and right there is the seventh, folks. Right there is the day the news came out. This has been climbing every single day since the news came out. And she has been floating on top of her nine day SMA. Look at that. Never came under it once all this time. Our volume has been increasing a little bit, but today it just exploded, folks. Look at all that volume and look at our technicals. I got to scroll everything down just to read the numbers. Our PPO is up here at 31, pushing up hard. Our MACD is at 23, a huge tsunami. Look at our RSI. That's at 91, folks. Oh my God. And look at that line. What did I tell you about the ADX? As long as the line is straight, continuing on in the same direction, whatever trend is on your chart is continuing. Well, that's been in an uptrend for quite a while, and that doesn't look like it's changing at all. The four hour chart looks super. I really like it. 20 day, one hour view. All right, so she was underneath everything as we saw. She hit that low right there of 70 cents. Is that the seventh right there? It is. So she started pushing up off of that low. It took two days to get back up on top of the 200. In pre-market after market on the sixth or the seventh, can't tell. And then the news came out. And there was a bounce, but it's just been a nice steady climb, folks. Easy going. And now she's picking up momentum, starting to go parabolic, and she's pushing hard. And there is our first red after many days. This is after market hours. All of our technicals look good still. We're still on top of the nine day SMA. Our PPO is strong, high up there at 35. We still have a straight line on our ADX. MACD does show a little bit of pullback and we do have a fall on the RSI, though it's still in the overbought. Five day, five minute. Oh, look at that. That's beautiful, folks. Just growing and growing. She has been climbing every single day. We've just got our 200 day SMA in here. She was floating above it, floating above the 50 day SMA and is now starting to level off. She hit a high bubble here of $1.99 and is doing some serious consolidation right on top of that 50 day SMA. Our technicals, now they're showing a pullback. Yes, they are. Things are coming down. We're still on top of our red line, but it's obviously pushing down. Our ADX has changed direction. That's not a straight line anymore. MACD has taken a huge tumble. Look at that. This was falling all day while that was climbing. That's called a divergence. You watch divergences very closely because you get activity out of them. And our RSI, it's falling as well. So is this going to continue to climb? Well, it looks like it's found its top. It looks like it is going to level off now, but I'm only guessing here. I wouldn't have thought she was going to get. This is the 13th. It started running on, well, actually it started running on the 5th, the 6th. So you're looking at eight days of climb. Whoa, that is a serious trend. I don't know if it's going to continue moving up, folks. It could surprise us. Fecal test kits could be very popular. So put SISI in your watch list. It doesn't cost anything to put it over there. Drop your list, right? Drop it in there. Boom. You see something happening? You already knew about it. You're welcome. All right, let's go take a look at that next healthcare sector stock. It's about as messy as this one. We're going to take a look at that other health sector stock now. I should probably put my rubber gloves on for this one too. This is sticker OPGN, OpGen Inc. This too is a penny stock on the NASDAQ. Now this is a full-fledged biotech company right here in the United States. They had some big news come out today. The charts haven't been showing a whole lot of activity until today and it blew well over 300% gains before it settled down. She finished today at just over 23 cents when just under 85% gains. Now I can't tell you everything this company does because it is a full-fledged biotech. They do a lot of things and I would honestly bore you to death just reading it. But what I will share with you is that OpGen Inc. is a precision medicine company harnessing the power of molecular diagnostics and bioinformatics to help combat infectious disease. 
See what I mean about technical jargon? So if you're really interested, there's a lot of information here, folks, that you can dive into. So what was the relative volume around this company's news today? Whoa, whoa, folks, that's 500 times her normal volume. Incredible. She went from 410,000 shares to 241 million. Whew. What is the share structure on this company? Right, another one I had to go look up. And the fact is, I kept finding two numbers over and over. So I'm not really sure which one it is. I came up with 48 million and 53 million. They're close. So we're right around 50 million in the float. What are our financials for this company? Well, they are making money. At the end of last year, they were at $4.3 million and they got to keep 1.4. Quarterly, they are making money, but whoa. That last quarter, what the heck happened there? They lost a lot of money that last quarter, three times as much as they made. Have to do some diving into that. Let's look at their disclosure, see if we got anything new over here. Uh, actually we do, and I know this 8K is going to be affiliated with the news. Normally when you have a big piece of news come out, you also have an 8K come out. An 8K is material change. Anything that changes the company comes out in an 8K. I love reading my 8Ks. Let's go over to that news, see what's going on there. So we got nothing coming in here on the OTC market, and I'm waiting for the rest. <laughs> All right, this is the news that came out today. Opgen announces positive top line data from clinical trial of Univero urinary tract infection panel. Here is the news. This did come out today. Opgen announces positive top line data. The study has enrolled over 1,800 patient samples at four United States clinical trial sites. The clinical performance results will be used to prepare submission package for FDA de novo request. And that's really the most important part here, folks. So what is an FDA de novo? Well, jumping on over here to Google, they tell us that the de novo request provides a marketing pathway to classify a novel medical device for which general controls alone provide reasonable assurance of safety and effectiveness. What we're talking about is the FDA approving another device. Just like with that fecal test, it was just a device that they got approval for to sell. And that's what they're looking to do as well. Going back to the news, they tell us that Opgen Inc. announced top line data from its successfully completed Univero UTI clinical trial. Opgen's Univero UTI panel tests for a broad range of bacterial and fungal pathogens, as well as antimicrobial resistance markers directly from urine specimens. The test aims at a quantitative detection of microorganisms. The trial included a total of 1,800 prospective and archive samples and has had a run of over 3,300 univeral cartridges. See, it's a device. Now that we have unblinded results, we are excited to proceed with our in-depth analysis and compile the data submission to the FDA over the next few months. So they're looking to sell their urinary tract test kit and they want to get it on the market fast in the next three months. And that's why the stock's running. Let's go see what the chart looks like. A lot of activity on that chart. That's OPGN, six month, four hour chart. We got a high here of about 88 cents six months ago. And two days ago, we hit a low of about 11 and a half cents, which makes our 23 cents today more than double that low bubble. She did have some strong activity back here. She pushed herself right up over this 200 day SMA and really fought hard to stay up there for a while. But she lost it back here and she has been falling ever since until she hit this low bubble. Now what I notice is the absence of volume. There isn't one single blue bar here, not even a little dinky one. Not until today. 
today's volume was incredible. It made all the difference in the world. The price was doing absolutely nothing. Did not bounce off the low bubble yesterday. But on today's news, she took off. Came out from underneath all her SMAs. Went above all the SMAs. And is now sitting pretty right on top of that 200-day SMA. Our technicals are still strong, but they do show signs of pulling back. Our PPO and our MACD both show a strong morning, but the afternoon was a little weaker. Our RSI has had a huge drop from 88 down to 56. Let's take a look at that 20-day, one-hour view. Not a whole lot going on. She was above the 200 for a while and then slipped and lost that and fell down to that low bubble, not bouncing off of it. News come out today, she took off. And as you can see, she's had a huge fall. Looks like way more than 50% she gave up. Our technicals are showing she is in a falling position right now. Everything is pointing down. Five day, five minute. Well, there's your surge, right? She was totally flat beforehand, and she took off here at 7.30 in the morning, pre-market. By the time the bell rang, it was about 25, 26 cents, somewhere around there. She hit a high of 45 and a half cents. That is over 300% gains. She started down here at about 12 cents and went to 45. And at noon, she lost it. That lunch bell rang and everybody went home and the price just crumbled. Went through every single SMA, including the 200, and she's sitting down here right now, not doing a whole lot. And all of our technicals show that she is not done falling. All of them are looking negative right now. OPGN had a wild day. They're looking for approval for a product to sell to check your urine. It could be big. The fecal one was, it could be big. And they're looking for this to be approved after they submit it within the next three months. So if you've got room on your, on your watch list, put OPGN over there. But for the heck of it, you might as well watch tomorrow. There could be another bounce. You never can tell with these biotech companies. OPGN had one hell of a day. What's it gonna do tomorrow? Yuck, not my kind of stocks to talk about. But we cannot be ignoring the health sector simply because they've got gross information in the news presses or they're difficult to read. I mean, you did see how tough it was, all that technical jargon. Imagine trying to explain it to somebody. Hopefully I'm giving you enough information to make you curious and you'll do some more DD. Now the other one, MAPT, that one was easy. That's like GPS. GIS. They're internally mapping buildings. Now they gave us a scenario of how we could use it during a crisis, but I'm sure they've got other beneficial uses for it as well. And again, more DD is going to help you here. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you folks.